Welcome to Leadership Talks, the podcast where we delve into the minds of some of the most influential leaders in business and beyond. I'm Martin Rovinsky, CEO of Boardseye, and your guide on this journey of discovery and insight. Today, we are joined by a guest who embodies the spirit of leadership and innovation. He's a globally recognized speaker, a best-selling author, and the founder of the Matham Group, a boutique consulting firm revered by Fortune 100 companies. His ability to connect, inspire, and lead through storytelling has transformed the lives of countless individuals and organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thrilled to introduce Christopher Kai. Good to see you, Martin. Christopher, it is an honor to have you with us. Your remarkable transition from an aspiring writer to a global leadership icon is truly inspiring. We're eager to hear your insights and the powerful stories that have shaped your journey. Well, so first, everyone should know Martin's journey where we both connected a few years back and how he talked about how he grew up in a war-torn country and former Soviet Union. And for me, I didn't grow up in a war-torn country, but we all had these very low points. So when people ask me about transitioning from a writer or let's say I used to work for American Express in more corporate world, once you start building that global brand, that's when you really start seeing opportunities in life because unfortunately, someone's going to Google you and you're going to either be invisible, visible, or an expert. And once I realized that, that yes, it's important to have a story, yes, it's important to have a content and a service and a business, but really, in the day and age we live now, if you do not have any level of notoriety, authority, or credibility online, it's very hard for you to cut through all the noise. Absolutely. And we met uh, first time you actually, the, the sides were flipped. <laughs> you were doing an interview with me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, here we are. Now I get you as a guest. Yeah. And the podcast I have is called the Gifters Podcast, where I interview inspiring entrepreneurs because they believe their story is gifted world. And again, you should really learn from this guy, Martin. I know I'm the guest here, but <laughs> thank you. when you see people that are inspiring and from the path that they've been on, it truly is amazing to have that sense of commonality. And we've shared the stage together. We've spoken with the president of Clinton or the CEO of Delta, CEO of Walmart, CEO of PayPal. And when you go to these conferences, again, when you start having that level of status, it's very inspiring to be able to share stories to inspire people because it's, that's really what all about really it's like how can you share stories impact people because that's what i really believe business is here for to serve yeah, people absolutely even the um, when you set me up with a visit to princeton university oh yeah <laughs> i mean that, talk about young hungry uh entrepreneurs just ready to learn i mean that was you know if i just touched one in that room uh, yeah the, well if you just touch one which let's say jeff bezos went there to school oh. <laughs> or Einstein, Albert Einstein, a, a true genius, used to teach there, right? Yeah. But when you go to those things and it's very prestigious for you to go there, it's just inspiring to know that you can touch that one person at a place like Princeton University, one of the top schools in the world. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So tell us a little bit about your transition from American Express, corporate world, mm -hmm. and your decision to write a book. I'm going to go mm -hmm. write a book and I'm going to go inspire people and but you know becoming a best author and then now speaking internationally i mean you just flew from i all flew over from place. la yeah i flew from la i gave two keynotes there but again i grew up in a very humble beginnings my mother was a school teacher my father was a case manager from new york city so i was born and raised in new york city but even as a seven-year-old kid i didn't have any money myself so i remember in winter time in new york it snows a lot and so i just get on my overcoat and not overcoat but my my little my little ski jacket and my little mittens and my, my hat, and I would just knock on doors with my shovel in my hand and just say, hey, do you want us to shovel your front yard for $20? And to know that I can get paid $100 as a seven-year-old, I was like, wow, I can buy my Max <laughs> Park cars and bubble gum. So the entrepreneurship started very early. The turning point for me was when I was 12, my uncle hired me at his insurance company. But the true turning point was once you have that entrepreneurial bug, you don't want to really ever... It doesn't really leave you. So when I got to American Express in my 20s, I just thought to myself, is this what life's about? You sit at a cubicle all day. Maybe you make decent money. Maybe you rise up the ranks. But I just saw that that was not my path. And since I already had the entrepreneurial bug, 
I decided to quit my job, as you said, <laughs> sell my luxury apartment. I was in my early, early to mid twenties, move out to California, pursue the dream, and like all things that it doesn't work out as you'd hope. It took me eight years to write a book, put a website out, had speeches. No one cared until this credibility thing. Until I started realizing a turning point. I had a friend of mine. He's at the time he was a 22 year old college dropout. Wrote a book on networking. Became a number one bestseller, and I just didn't believe them. But I just asked a few more questions. Like, oh, this is real. So I ended up spending eight weeks writing a book about networking, and that did become a number one bestseller. And all surprise, surprise, Marin has a story. Christopher has a story. But as soon as Marin is speaking at Princeton, is on Forbes, is on Inc. Magazine, or Christopher is on these global stages, all of a sudden now people want to listen to me, even though our hearts are still in the same place. Yeah. But now I understand the marketing side. So for anyone listening, watching. Know that your story is amazing. It is a gift, but if you don't have people like a Martin that understands executive level branding, it's very hard for you to really impact the people you want and make the income you want. It's awesome. One part of your journey story that I love is your Elon Musk <laughs> encounter. Not yeah. only because you did an interview with them, which at first I thought that was awesome, but then then I learned beyond the interview, you got Elon to come out mm. and meet with you. <laughs> And go to a shelter. Yeah, shelter. Correct? Am I right? Yes. yes okay. Yes. So tell tell us a little bit about that. So so I wrote a book on networking with billionaires and executives because I really want to help people. I don't. I didn't write a book because I like networking. Actually, I just like meeting people, learning. But in business, it's about how do you serve. So people kept asking me, Christopher, how do you go to these events with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, Elon Musk? I said, well, I researched where I want to go and meet the people I admire, and I really believe that. The Elon Musk of the world, the Richard Bransons, are the Picassos and the Da Vincis of capitalism. And so, if you're going to learn, you want to learn from the best. And with Elon, I met him at a Golden Globe party many years ago in Beverly Hills, and I just asked him to come to a homeless youth program I created called Mondays at the Mission, where we have inspired over a thousand teenagers that live in a shelter, largest shelter in the country. And Elon, to his credit, the guy literally is the richest guy in the world. But he came down. We interviewed him for a half hour. And paid him zero dollars because he was there for the right reasons, and he even said to me, "Well, Christopher, you know a lot." And so it just goes to show you again: if you have a mindset of a billionaire, if you have the skill set of networking, maybe you have the intention of a heart-centered leadership, you really can do a lot. And Elon is one of those guys where it's like, it could be you. Oh my gosh, Christopher, I could never imagine sharing the stage with the CEO of Delta or speaking at Princeton. But why not? You of all people, given where you grew up, right?、Yeah. And for me, again, my parents were immigrants themselves, so that's why when we first spoke, again, I told you my parents are immigrants, and so I really admire people that have gone through certain struggles. But Elon, he was a guy from South Africa, would be beaten and bullied and teased.、He、had a very poor relationship with his father. You have a chance to read his biography; it's phenomenal by Walter Isaacson or Ashley Vance. But to have him come to the worst part of town in Los Angeles, where it was a Massive homeless shelter called Union Rescue Mission, where there's over a thousand people. A hundred of those are kids. In my program, we would go there every single week to really help and hopefully inspire these kids to just stay alive.、It、wasn't even what the I mean. Yes, some of them went to college, but it's really they need、survival. hope. They need hope. Survival. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's uh, and I love that reply that he gave you.、It、was just a simple yes, right? <laughs> it was like okay, okay, yeah. Hey, Elon,、okay. you want to come inspire our kids? Okay. okay. <laughs> and he showed up.、Um, so throughout your journey, obviously we we talk and we did a talk、uh, at Hope Global about、mm -hmm. executive branding,、mm -hmm. which is what you just touched on.、Mm -hmm. So if you're Googled, nothing exists. People look for thought leaders.、Mm -hmm. People look maybe industry specific, but somebody that really stands out. We、mm -hmm. found that at Board's Eye, like out of the people that we send for interviews. Who do they pick to interview? They always seem to pick the people that stand out, people that have written articles, that have spoken on stage,、um, that have really done something significant. And with that being said, and us working on on a few different things, and we're helping quite a few executives right now.、Um, beyond the writing, you know, us suggesting write a book,、uh, us suggesting write articles, utilize. I mean, there's so many free tools like、mm -hmm. LinkedIn by itself.、Mm -hmm. Um, which, by the way, I just got、uh, top voice 
Today congrats. I got an email about congrats, Best Thought Leader. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I've been writing for them for two years. It took that long. Um, but all these things pay off. And speaking on stage, I think, was the next level. Mm -hmm. And I know um, a lot of that for me is thanks to you. Mm -hmm. So your program, guiding people that through that, is significant. So mm -hmm. talk about your program a little bit. Yeah, so I started a program seven years ago called GPS. Is when I realized, okay, I want to help my clients, primarily entrepreneurs and executives, share their story. How do you do that? Well, first of all, again, building that sense of executive branding. So I decided at that point, I'd already been speaking for more than 15 years, and I kept getting asked to teach them how to be a speaker. And it really comes down to three things specifically. What is your expertise? What is your ability to market the expertise? And lastly, how do you actually sell your expertise? So in your case, you're a perfect example. You have and expertise in executive branding. How do you reach these corporations as a board of advisor? But just because you're an executive, do you have that marketing tool of having testimonials, videos? And lastly, the salesmanship of it is, again, you're not gonna be getting the money you deserve or the impact you have on a global stage if you don't understand a level, level of sales, right? So the GPS was really a creation because my clients wanted it. And when I realized that there's so many phenomenal stories out there but not being told, I decided to create GPS, which stands to be the Gifted Professional Speaker Program. And you easily go to a Toastmasters to learn how to speak, but I focus on the branding and the marketing and sales. If people talk about the Ferrari of success, which has been, they've been told me, telling me about that, it's like, well, the four wheels of success in speaking is really understanding the network to access, understanding the expertise slash branding, and marketing and sales. So anyone who's listening, you really, in the world we live in now, it's only going to get worse relative to the noise with AI, with augmented reality, with all these people who are trying to get your attention. If you're not an international speaker, you're essentially invisible. And I don't want my clients and friends and colleagues being invisible. So I really encourage people to understand how important it is to not just speak, but to actually have in your bio, you're an international speaker. And in Martin's case, for him to already have achieved his level of success, but still, before we were working together, it's still about, well, I want to get on bigger stages. Yeah. And now, that is what I call a forever Elon brand, because no matter whether you're speaking now or in 10 years or in 20 years, you can say, you shared the stage with President Clinton, CEO of Delta, and for all the people that are listening, that will help you get to any room, any investor, any client, any fan or follower, because that's literally what all these people do. Yeah. And even uh, getting from writing articles to writing a book, that step for me made it easier mm -hmm. to get to the stage because when people do Google, for example, me as a self-example, mm -hmm. but when people Google me, first thing comes up is author. Mm -hmm. And then you get into details, the books come up, but that sets uh, authority. Mm -hmm. So especially if the book is written exactly well, what you do in my case it's called the corporate matchmaker yeah what does boards i do a corporate matchmaking yeah so. it, it's but it's in alignment right yeah so for those who are listening and watching you have to remember everyone's busy doing their thing and every generation is different but this generation post instagram and TikTok and clubhouse going back to distractions if you are not able to speak communicate concisely a message it's going to be very hard for you to really impact people around the world and that's that's what we try to do. That's what you're impact. definitely doing with thousands of entrepreneurs. Yeah, and I think you get to a certain level, whether uh, whether it's corporate or entrepreneurs, right? You get to a certain level, and whether you want to or not, people are going to come to you. Mm -hmm. They're going to ask for advice, and I think there are two types of people. Some probably don't give it or don't care, mm -hmm. which is fine. Those exist, but I think most of us, I think especially entrepreneurs. We want to give back. Mm -hmm. We want to inspire. And we see that because we've been there before. Mm -hmm. And now we've reached a certain level and it's time to give back. And that's really what I love the most about your Gifters mm -hmm. program, your GPS, mm -hmm. Gifters X, your talks. Oh, talk about those too. Yes. Yeah, because so I just came from Miami. You did. You did, right? So again, we, we have different iterations of life. So GPS is more of my pay global membership where I really teach and hone my clients on how to be global speakers. And I decided just like you have TED Talks, the main conference, you have yep. TEDx Talks, which is more of the locally organized ones. So I decided, you know what, I want to branch out and build even a bigger community. So 
called Gift Direct Talks. So GPS is more for clients and executives that really want to hone their expertise in speaking. And Gift Direct Talks is more of a bigger global community. And we're the leading speaker community for entrepreneurs where we've had close to a thousand people come and speakers such as the TED founder, Richard Saul Warman. And again, Martin has shared the stage with him as well. And so it's just inspiring to know the founder of the TED conference has been to my events and spoken there, or the Queen Diambe or the World's Strongest Woman. But again, going back to the executive branding, once you're on these stages, which I recognize that if I have this ability to connect with people like Elon Musk, if I have the ability to motivate, inspire, and to really bring people in this community, and you were there at that event, I was shocked myself how, how heart-centered people were because that was not my intention to have it so, it was just very, very, very heart-centered, which is great. But in business, there's that balance. But I was just very warm to know that if you speak with authenticity, authenticity and you have an intention to serve, it really does touch people in, 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 in their heart and their mind. And so Gift Direct Talks is a global community, an entrepreneur community for speakers. And so it's just been a great journey. We've done 10 so far, but just like TED Conference, I don't know if you know, that started 39 years ago. I didn't know it was 39 30, years 1984, ago. And people don't realize I spoke to Richard Saul Warman, and he's 88 years old right now. The TED, well, Steve Jobs was actually there as a guest, but they didn't really advertise that. Steve Jobs was there for the first TED Talk. My mentor, Nicholas Negroponte, shout out to him. He was the first TED Talk speaker, but it didn't blow up until about 2002 that the whole YouTube came about. Mm. And that's the model I took. So I have the, the TED Talks, which is the global conference. And then TEDx Talks for me, GPS. We have Gift of Talks for clients of ours. And then we have Gift of X Talks. So in business, it's always about anchoring what works, what doesn't work. But the core thing is you have a phenomenal story. I met your wife before and she's amazing too. She has an amazing story too. But imagine you get to share that story on a global platform. And you don't even know, Martin. You're inspiring people all the time. I remember seeing Martin at a university in Florida. And after his speech, he was outside. <laughs> and all the just these young men and women just crowded around him. And I just had a smile on my face because I just got to see it and witness it. And it's just very inspiring to see. Yeah, and that's, uh, for me, that's like fuel, you know. <laughs> Inspire, inspiring others is feeling me to continue doing that. Um, but I also, also always believed in what you give in life, mm -hmm. you get back twice yeah, fold. Yeah. And that's not the reason for giving, but it just naturally happens. Um, and that's that, science, actually. There's, well, there's a guy, gentleman named Adam Grant. He's a professor out of Warden University of Pennsylvania. He wrote a book called Give and Take. But the laws of, you know, whatever, whatever, what is that, like, what goes up must come down, yep. you know? It, it's literally science where every action has equal and opposite reaction. Yep. So it's such a powerful perspective to understand that when you do give, you, you get back. Whatever I'm pushing pulls. So anyone who's listening and watching know that it's just so powerful to know that instead of thinking more scarcity, think more abundance. And Martin and I have been friends and colleagues for a few years now, and we've seen the progress that other people that we've impacted have made. And that's why whether it's Gift Direct Talks, the speaker platform, or GPS, this more paid global membership, and I'm always having different iterations. I recently created a program called the Billionaire Networking System, where I really dissect the science of networking in terms of four levels. I really teach entrepreneurs, well, how do you access people from whatever ethnicity, whatever culture, whatever economic background, so they really know that it is possible to meet anyone in the world if you have a clear intention of service and you think the long game. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of science, I just saw an interesting video. It was exact same distance. There's a marble being dropped. One was a straight shot and the other one was up, down, up, down, up, but exact same distance. Most people would assume that the straight shot would get there quicker. Mm -hmm. But I look at the, the one that goes down and back up actually gets there quicker. But what I like about it is to put it in perspective of life, because life is just full of ups and downs. But as long as you get up from the down, mm -hmm. whenever you hit a wall, that builds you stronger. So I actually believe that if you hit obstacles in life, but you are willing to power through them, learn from them, make a better decision next time, you will actually get to your, in your journey to your goal, maybe not your life goal, but your next goal, your next stepping stone a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Just a little thing I throw, uh, throw out there. No, 
the thing is, people look at Instagram and all these different social medias and say, oh, it's so cushy to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> but every entrepreneur knows without those struggles, without the pressures, without the challenges, you're not an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's why I, you and I, as entrepreneurs, I can match with just any PhD in business at any school in the world because if they've not run a business, no matter whether you're Elon Musk or someone else, it's just, it is challenging. And it's almost like, unless you're an entrepreneur, it's like you're swimming in the ocean and every day you might be drowning. But that's a skill set you need to be learning how to swim. Yeah. Whereas anyone that's an employee, they're on ground. No matter how challenging it is on ground, it's still on ground. There's actual foundation. Well, you know, what happened with the pandemic? Your, com your company can just be completely decimated in a matter of months or even seconds. Yeah. But I love what you said because that's life. And I love it. I would not have it any other way. I started my company 23 years ago. I've had different companies but I haven't had an actual day job in 23 years. <laughs> and that's a long time. That is a long time. And you're loving it. I, and you don't look older a, than 23, so I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's good genes. <laughs> yeah. So last message uh, to entrepreneurs, leaders, corporates. Uh, well, what would you like to pass? Maybe two messages to our corporates and uh, entrepreneurs in specific. Well, for professionals, I highly encourage you to find a side hustle because we live in a world where if you expect to have your job in one year, two years, five years, is that really realistic with all the things going on? So you do your best to find a side hustle. And the second one is for entrepreneurs, you really have to consider being a speaker or coach because you all have this knowledge. You can have an actual business like a, a shoe shining company or a car company, but when you're a, what they call a knowledge expert, it's such a massive industry. The, yeah. Corporate conference space is $1.6 trillion. The e-learning space is $800 billion. And the personal development, i.e. self-help space, is a $67 billion space. That's over $2 trillion market for all these executives, entrepreneurs out there that if you want to make an income, make an impact, it's the quickest, easiest, best way to do all those things by sharing your story. Awesome. Thank you. Christopher Kai? Great Thank seeing you again, Mark. Awesome seeing you again. All right, bye-bye. We're out.